in the Xioxang Yugen dialect. In one of the many skyscrapers with panoramic windows, two young men hear terrible news for themselves. A girl with short hair and glasses pulls out an order to terminate a labor document and tells a certain Wang Tansel and his friend that they were fired and she was instructed to announce it to them. Ban's fat friend is not happy about this news, saying that yesterday they worked hard for the company, and today they are told that they are fired. The girl, without showing any emotions, simply says that this decision was made by the president of their company, not her, so she does not want to listen to any outrage. Wang Chansong, a tall, statuesque and slender young man with dark hair and blue eyes, asks his friend to calm down and tells the girl that they will leave. But before they leave the company building, they intend to go to this cruel female president in order to find out the reason for the dismissal and the fat man supports him. But the girl asks them to stop and not go to the president because she is now at a meeting. The guys walk to the meeting room and rush into the room in an unprecedented manner and ask President Sayo from the doorstep to justify the reason for his dismissal to them. A dozen people turn around at them, who are angry because their meeting has been interrupted. The company's president Sayox Ang Sayo Ye is an attractive girl with long wavy hair, purple eyes and cherry red lips, and she sternly asks her former employees how they dared to make such a noise and burst into the meeting room without any reason. While she is having a meeting with the highest masters, Wang Tiansong explains that they came to make a statement according to which they did not violate any company rules, and also their work was qualified, so for what reason were they fired? This time the fat man asks his friend to calm down. He also does not understand the reason for the dismissal, but now is not the time to arrange a showdown, because there are a lot of people in the room and it's somehow inconvenient. Xiao just starts getting angry at them and in a rough, steely voice simply says that if she said they were fired, then they are fired. They're in no position to argue with her. Van and the fat man are two nobodies who annoy and anger her, so she asks her guards to kick the couple out and not let them step on the threshold of the company. Judo coach Kavano Jiro gets up from his seat, telling the woman that it's not worth calling security. And he himself will teach these girls a lesson. He grabs Van by the hand and throws him over himself. Zioya takes a cup of green tea, takes a sip and looks at how Wang Tansong is tossed. In her opinion, her former employees deserve it because they dared to play in front of her as if they had at least some prestige. This time she's done with these scum. And besides, Kavanaugh Gyro, the national champion, but then a beaten Gyro lands next to her unconscious. The woman jumps up from her seat and looks at the guys and the lying man with incomprehension. She does not understand how it happened that Gyro threw him over the shoulder, and in the end he lies next to her. The fat man looks at his friend in amazement, calling him cool, he didn't really see anything. The fat man asks his friend when he managed to learn martial arts. And Wang Tansong did not expect this from himself, he did not think that he was so strong and was in shock himself. How he was able to throw this master now is not entirely clear to him. The young man remembers that two hours ago he received an award from a live broadcast. Wang Tansong was sitting in an internet cafe, where he was sitting very enthusiastically at the computer. He was so upset that he was fooled by the client again and even Sun Pan does not know where he went. Now the guy is bored, because no one can keep him company. Van leans his cheek on his hand and sighs, because the only thing left for him is to watch streams to kill time. He has just signed up for a streaming platform called Wang Jai Livestream, even though it is a small streaming platform. Of course, registration on the platform is a random filling. Arbitrarily filled in data can be successfully registered, which will already make the platform unusual. The young man notices that the Kung Fu category is very common and it's really unusual, so he clicks on the category and decides to look at what's there. The system shows the young man greetings, where he calls him Father Van, the first earthly tyrant. Van does not understand when he has already managed to become the first earthly tyrant. And his financial condition has grown to 999,999 coins. Was he given a reward for something? However, he did not do anything like that. Most likely it is a bonus for registration. A pretty girl with long copper-colored hair, a red robe and bows appears on the computer screen. The girl's name is Lei Fan and she welcomes everyone to her station, calling her name and hoping that her stream will appeal to all viewers. Wang Tansong thinks Lei Fan is a very nice girl, and also very polite. She is definitely his type, so Ri decides to give her a hard time to inspire her. He sends her 999,999 coins, which causes a huge flurry of messages from other viewers. Van doesn't understand why there is so much fuss in the studio, didn't these people register for a free game? Everyone is chatting very animatedly, and the guy becomes a little interested. On the other side of the screen, Lei Fan smiles sweetly and thanks the viewer Father Wang for such a huge gift, saying that she is a little girl and very grateful. Tiansong leans back in his chair and puts his hands behind his head, saying that it's not worth being grateful, because she deserved it, becoming so nice, but after this reward, he doesn't know what to do. 
As a thank you, Lei Fan invites Wang to watch her performance at the concert. Wang Tansong asks to show a show in which she is good. Lei Fan is embarrassed and begins to show fighting poses. Her movements are smooth and very energetic, and it's just amazing. This is completely unlike Tai Chi, which is both a Chinese martial art practiced for self-defense and for health benefits and meditation. According to Tian Song, Lei Fan is very young and already has incredible talent and skills in Tai Chi. After finishing her performance, the girl smiles sweetly and says that her performance of Lei Shi Taizi is completed and she hopes that everyone liked it and thanks everyone for the awards. The fan also mentions that a treasure chest will appear on the stream soon, so viewers should not miss it. From the trunk, Wang Tiansung takes out a book that seems to him a holographic projection, but this book looks like a real one, but then the book disappears, and the guy compares it as an electric shock. At that moment, he didn't even know what happened then, but just at that moment his life changed dramatically. Wang Tiansung returns to reality, where karate coach Liu Jihao shouts at him very much, who is extremely unhappy with what the young man did with Jairo Kavanaugh. Jihao asks if Wang Tiansung has forgotten how he beat him up very badly last month. Did the guy decide to try his luck and wants to be beaten up again? Because he does not own martial arts, Liu Zhihao swings and intends to hit the young man, who gets away without any problems. Wang Tiansong feels that the man is not his equal and the body reacted by itself. It seems that Wang understood what was going on and his body really learned Lei Shi Taizi. The people gathered in the negotiation room get up from their seats and look dumbfounded at the guy who put two in a row on the shoulder blades. Wang is really very good at kung fu. Van turns to his friend the fat man and says that they are leaving, because he knows that there is a better place. A bunch of trash gathered in the dojo and think they're the best in South Lake. The fat man calls all the gathered pussies, who still have the opportunity to bow to his brother well, Wang Tansong and learn something. Director Zioya stops the young men, saying that everything that happened was a misunderstanding. She calls Tansong Wang Tan, explaining to him that she made the wrong decision and he actually has talent, so she wants him to stay. Zioya promises to withdraw the dismissal order and he will be able to return to work. After listening to her, Wang Tan waves his hand to her in a farewell gesture saying that he will not return, and he is also obliged to pay his salary for the last month and that's it. The headmistress is at a loss, she can't let him go. The guy is too strong and can get in their way, so she needs to find a way to keep him. Zioya turns to the fat man saying that she remembers that he had a lot of debts, so she asks him to change his mind, promising not to fire him. While he is considering her offer, she will let him stay and work, and even promises to double his salary. Mentally, the woman rejoices, Wang Tan is a little brat, and she wants him to see how harsh reality is and disgrace himself. The fat man asks Wang Tan if he can agree to Zioya's proposal. Tan does not even turn around and does not look at his friend, telling him that he is free to make decisions himself. The fat man smiles and tells Zioya that he needs to repay the loan next week, otherwise he does not have enough cash for it. Wang Tan is sad, but outwardly does not show it. Pleased with herself, Zioya folds her arms on her chest and says that those who understand how things are are wonderful people. She believes that the fat man made the right choice, but Wang Tan needs to open his eyes and see how he should have acted in order to comply. The fat man does not let her finish, who spits in her face and says that he is disgusted to be near her, because she behaves arrogantly because of work, not respecting anyone but herself. He tells her that even if she begs him to come back, he will refuse and will not abandon his friend, brother Wang Tan. The fat man comes up to him, puts his hand on his shoulder and says that it's time for them to leave this terrible place. Men who were with her in the meeting room run up to Zioya and ask how she is and whether she should call the police. She is incredibly angry, but refuses the police and just asks to pick up all those who are lying on the floor. And those who have left are allowed to leave the building and that's it. The woman screams furiously and says she will leave Wang Tan to die in this city without a funeral. The fat man and Wang Tansong are sitting on a bench in the park, where the tall crowns of trees form a shadow. The guys are having a heartfelt conversation, saying that they have not been so free, carefree for a very long time. It must be now that Sayoya is spoiling and angry at them for the decision they made. But now they are both unemployed again, but they don't quite know what to do now. Wang Tan hands the fat man a savings card, saying that there are $5,000 on it that he was able to save, so he asks the fat man to take it for emergency needs. The fat man does not take the card asking how things will be with his friend, but Wang asks him not to worry, because he has a plan how to earn money. But while he does not wash to explain and tell how he is going to earn, the fat man worries that his Doug is going to commit a crime. He does not take the card from Wang Tan, going home and saying that he will find a job at an intern, and let Tan not commit any nonsense. Wang Tansong has no doubt in his friend and that he will be able to earn with the help of these live broadcasts, but let him wait a little. Wang Tansong came home when the sun left the firmament and was replaced by a bright moon. 
Taking a deep breath and closing his eyes, he took out his phone and downloaded the mobile version of Worldwide Live, where he had previously watched the broadcast of Lay Fan and received a little money, which he immediately spent. After downloading the application, the guy decides to check his balance in order to find out if it has been updated, but nothing comes out because the application does not open. Wang Tian looks puzzled at his smartphone, as if this way he will be able to understand the reason, but nothing came to his mind, and he assumes that the application is available only in the internet cafe. He leans back exhausted on the bed until his phone receives a notification that he has no signal and the internet is not working. The young man squints and remembers that he forgot to pay for the home internet, but he does not have the money to pay for it this second, so he turns on cellular data. He doesn't care about the traffic he spends, because he does important things. After turning on the cellular data, he still manages to log into the application, and he gets the greeting of the application itself. The young man goes to the section with the balance, where he sees 2 million coins on his account, which makes him immensely happy and surprised, because the amount has been updated and even doubled compared to the last time. Grinning, he begins to study other sections and decides that this time he does not want to consider martial arts as an object for study, because the main thing he needs is to find a way to earn money. It seems to Tian Song that the categories of films, news and technology are very profitable and widespread, but unfortunately he does not have much time to invest, so he decides to take up literature. Going to the P equals literature section, he decides to check how correct his guesses are and immediately gets on the broadcast of the third uncle from the northern school, an old man who tells that the fourth volume of his new book records of the protection of the treasure will be released tomorrow, and he hopes that his viewers will continue to support Sanjui's work. The man notices that Wang Tan has joined his trance under the pseudonym Papa Wang, which the man is incredibly happy about, as are his viewers. The man says he is the third uncle of the northern school, and he is broadcasting his new novel live. Wang Tansung decides to watch the broadcast zero to see what he can get out of it, so he asks the viewers of the broadcast how they are announcing the book from Sanjui and they answer him, writing that the book is very good and surprised that the local tyrant Papa Wang reads books. The third uncle of the northern school, taking out a fan and smiling sweetly, says that if Papa Wang is interested in his book, he can go and buy a new book for familiarization. Wang Tan thoughtfully puts his fingers on his chin. Because, oddly enough, he usually likes to read books, but at the same time he has never heard of this book, so he decides to find information about it on the internet. After searching a little on the internet and not finding any information about this work, in connection with which he concludes that whether it is Lei Fan or this book, they do not belong to the same world as the young man. Here, everyone should belong to a parallel world, so it's not for nothing that they call it worldwide life. A satisfied smile appears on Wang Tan's face, because he likes this arrangement, because it will be easier to cope with it, because this is not the most ordinary world. Pa Ren decides to open the treasure chest, which informs the viewers of the uncle's broadcast. He, as a local tyrant, is ready to give the award, in the hope that everyone will support this author. He gives away all his two million coins, because in any case, the young man will not be able to keep it all night, so when he opens the chest, he will see what will fall out to him. The third uncle of the northern school, seeing the amount, blushes with embarrassment and rejoices at this, thanks to Papa Wang. The young man on the other side of the screen asks Sanjui to send him an electronic version of his novel, and the uncle says with a pleasant smile that he will send everything without any problems and hopes that the guy will like his creation. In addition to the announced book, the man promises to send the guy exclusive software for the next chapters that have not yet been released. Wang Tan has dropped a chest with an object inside, so he immediately presses and it opens. The system congratulates the guy who received Kai Bai's calligraphy black fish and insect. A young man picks up a scroll that is strikingly different from the previous book on Tai Chi, because it is a real thing that has not disappeared. The guy likes this reward. It is possible that it can be exactly what he wanted. It turns out that if he watches some live broadcast, he will most likely receive some kind of reward. He opens the scroll and whistles, surprised that it is a work of art by a master craftsman. The texture is great, the objects of painting seem so alive, and even more so Tiansong has heard about Kai Bai, so it turns out that there are prizes from his world. Master Kai Bai has studied and all his articles are in textbooks. For an artist of the national heritage level, his works should be of great value. But the young man, unfortunately, does not really understand the field of painting and now he is wondering how much this painting costs. So he decides to look at other works by this master. Wang Tan learns via the internet that last year's auction of 550,000, 1,900,000 and some other works were sold for 4,250,000. When the sun just rises from the horizon, Wang Tianzong has already woken up and went outside, inhaling the fresh cool air. It's been a very long time since he slept so well and soundly and woke up early in the morning until 6 in the morning. 
The young man clenches his fist aloud thinking that yesterday there were several fierce battles. But his whole body did not hurt at all and he felt full of strength. Most likely. This is due to the contribution of Tai Chi and it is really amazing. Wang Tian decides to take a walk in the park and noticing that the park is empty and there is no one, so he decides to stretch his muscles. The Taijiquan that Wang Tian studies is different from ordinary martial arts and is divided into internal and external martial arts. Wai Jiaquan. In other words, the focus on improving muscle and cardiovascular performance is called external, and this is aimed at strengthening the body, adjusting body coordination and focusing on maintaining health. True internal martial arts are all about killing and are usually used only in real combat. That is, everything focuses on the manipulation of Kai, called internal. The young man smiles feeling how great Tai Chi is slowly moving all over his body. But it looks like he is absorbing the Kai of heaven and earth, and his body feels light as a feather. An old man appears behind the guy, who calls him incredibly cool, and Tan asks if he needs any help. The old man laughs and folding his hands behind his back says that he just walked by and saw Tai Chi Wang Tan. The old man decides to say that he knows a little about Tai Chi, but the martial art of the young man, in his opinion, looks very unique, so he asks to talk about it, because even though it is a campaign for Tai Chi, but in fact it is not it. Wang Tan awkwardly scratches the back of his head, imagining that this is some kind of family little martial art, so the old man did not see him. The man feels the guy's torso through his t-shirt and notices that the young man's body is weak, but there is plenty of energy, it is so extraordinary and wonderful. Tiansong is embarrassed, so he turns around, intending to escape, saying that he still has a number of urgent matters, and the old man hopes that they will meet again. The young man walks away from the old man and exhales with relief and closing his eyes thinks how it happened that he met such a strange uncle early in the morning. The guy thinks that he is a pervert. The young man just slipped away, because he still has serious things to do. Behind Tiansong, a man of 40, 45 years old approaches the old man and calls him dad, scolding and saying that he repeatedly asks him to stop wandering around. Because if something happens to him, their family business will collapse, and it's not worth chatting with passers-by. The old man says that he watched a not very pretty young man who skillfully trained like a real master. The time has already passed for 11 of the day and the streets have become full of people, some are in a hurry somewhere, others are just walking, and others are sitting and chatting. Wang Tan wanders down the street staring at his smartphone, which serves as his navigator, because he was looking for a good antique store in the aisles of his leisure. The application shows a bus that can take you to the antique shop before it closes. The young man has a bag on his shoulder, in which there is a picture of Kai Bai. The bus driver asks the passengers to hurry up, because soon he will start, and they will go to Giant City, so everyone needs to take their seats. Tiansong enters the bus, which is filling up more and more every second. To such an extent it becomes crowded that there is nothing to breathe and there are no free seats at all. The young man has millions of valuable paintings in his back, so he actively defends himself on the bus from crowding and crowding. And at some point, regardless of which person he pushes away, which turns out to be a young girl whom he accidentally touched for a bust, the girl is confused and angry, so she and her friends start shouting at the young man, calling him a smelly scoundrel who does not look at whom and how he touches. Wang Tan apologizes, apologizing to the girl and explaining that he didn't mean anything bad. It's just that the bus is bumpy and crowded, he didn't intentionally touch her and embarrassed her. The girl does not intend to listen to him, so she shouts saying that he is a careless cretin who does undecent things in broad daylight, and therefore he is a dirty pervert. She promises to call the police as soon as she leaves the bus. And to begin with, she and her friend intend to transfer to the other end of the bus, and the young man repeats again that he did not do it on purpose, and she is too arrogant and hysterical. The bus slows down sharply and the girls who did not have time to reach their seats back away. They almost fall, but Chansung becomes their pillow by will, they lean on him and continue to stand on their feet. He is quite calm, but at the moment he will put his arm around both girls' waists and feels great. The girl apologizes for bumping into him and almost falling on him, and Wang, in turn, says that's why he just said that he didn't touch her on purpose that time. He begins to taunt her and calls her a scoundrel who touched him without his permission and knowledge, so she should think twice before saying something to someone. Their dialogue is interrupted by the bus driver saying that he has an important emergency message. Due to the expensive construction, this bus will not stop at Jaya East Station and will go to Jaya North Station, so passengers heading to the East Station must leave the bus. Hearing these words, Wang Tan gets off the bus and sadly thinks that it will be very difficult for him to get to the necessary store on time. Such a situation is very unpleasant for a young man. He rubs his eyes while standing at a stop, because it is possible that today he will not be able to do what he had previously planned, and he does not even have a plus for a hotel. Next to him there are two girls who shouted at him earlier, hugging him. 
As it turned out, they were also going to the Vostochny railway station, and therefore they suggest that the three of them go by taxi sharing the fee, since at this stop it is very difficult to wait for the next bus that could take them to the right station. In the end, he agrees and they call a car whose driver asks them not to worry, because his car is very fast and he promises to take them to the Eastern Railway Station before 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The taxi driver also apologizes for the fact that the whole trio had to sit back, because he took a lot of food with him from home and without thinking put it in the front passenger seat. Wang Tian says that they were very lucky that they were able to catch a taxi so quickly and they did not have to wait long. The driver envies Tian, calling him lucky because he is traveling with two beautiful girlfriends, from whom he cannot take his eyes off. Both girls sharply reply that they are not friends and do not know each other. A dark-haired girl with long brown hair, red eyes and a pretty appearance is called Kinger, and she whispers to her blonde friend with sharp features, whose name is Sayo Hui, that she is a little sorry that she drove this car with this strange guy, who is Wang Tansong. It seems to her that he is bothering her and as soon as they arrive at their destination, she hopes that she will never see him again. Van pushes the girl a little with his shoulder and she starts to get angry at him. But he asks her to be quiet a little and sit in silence. Because something is wrong with this taxi driver and he is taking them the wrong way. Because he is moving further and further off the road. The young man turns to the man asking where he is taking them. Because the road leads to the forest, not to the city. And the taxi driver with a nasty grin says that he is taking them to a wonderful place. He stops and lowers the windows, behind which there are a lot of men who, when they see the girls, lick their lips carnivorously and say that they are their terminal and have fallen into a happy forest. The girls are dragged out of the car by force, painfully squeezing their elbows and licking themselves. According to the men, they will have a little fun with the three of them, and then they will kill them so the police will find only corpses. The men cackle, rejoicing that they will not only rob them, but also make fun of the girls, so after they pulled Sayo Hui out, they pull their hand to Kinger trying to pull her out, but Wang Tansong, whom the men have not noticed yet, grabs her by the hand. The young man tells the girl that he wants to get out of the car, because it's boring in it, and the bandit pulls out a knife and demands that they get out voluntarily. Wang Tansong gets out of the car and stretches, because his body is numb. He asks men to calm down and not be so aggressive, and they, in turn, consider the guy mentally cooled down, because before he understands the situation, he climbs into trouble. They demand that he give them all his money and jewelry and then his death will be quick. Tian is forgiven by them, saying that he really doesn't have much money lately, and besides, he needs to go to Jaya, so they can just beat him up. One of the men tells his accomplices that they will kill the guy. Kinger and Xiaohui are worried about the young man, so they ask the bandits to stop and promise to give them the money they have. But before they finish, they look at how the guy wins over five men in a fraction of a second and then stretches his neck, asking the ladies not to worry about him because those cretins turned out to be too weak and cool only in words. The trio immediately called the police, whose outfit came to the forest for the guys and the attackers were brought to justice. As it turned out, Zinger knows someone from the police station and now they are being taken straight to the east station and Wang Tan thanks the girl because thanks to her they saved his time. Zinger explains that she doesn't know the people from the station, but her family, that's why she turned, and she also blushes a little and thanks Wang Tan for saving their lives. The young man smiles calmly and says that it doesn't cost anything for him, because it's just a small thing to help people, and mentally he thinks that Zinger is wildly cute when she blushes and is so timid. A law enforcement officer brings them to the vicinity of Giant Station, which is about 5 minutes 10 minutes away, and the guys thank him, bowing. Zio Ya meets them, which surprises Wang Tan very much, and he asks Kinger if she knows this woman, and the girl smiles awkwardly and replies that this is her older sister, who was very worried about her. Zio Ya notices Wang Tan Song and asks about what is happening and why he is with her younger sister and the young man. After exchanging glances with her and throwing lightning bolts, tells her that this is a simple coincidence, and he is a simple passenger who is already leaving. The young man turns around and leaves thinking that he is not a vindictive loser, so he will calmly leave. The day would come when she and her entire Zio family would repay him and the fat man for the insults they shouted at their backs by humiliating and kicking them out. Zinger notices the cold look of his sister Ya and asks her if she knows the young man who left. Because they both have a very sharp look that makes you shiver. Zio Ya says that they have nothing against this little cock and she cares more about what connects Zinger and him. Zinger happily jumps into the arms of his sister and explains to her that Tiansong is her savior, because they were taken to the forest, where there were many bandits and Wang Tian coped with them by himself, scattering them around the clearing. The girl is impressed and very actively talks about how the guy was super cool and better than all those trainers who are in the Zio Family Martial Arts Hall. Kinger says that if it wasn't for Wang Tian, Zio you might never have seen her again, so the young man is a very good person. 
After listening to the younger one, I close my eyes and say that for her sake, she will not argue with the guy yet. She is grateful to him for her sister because she was very worried about her. It's getting dark outside and Wang Tan is staying at the Heavenly Hotel. Going into his room, the guy sits down exhausted on the bed, bending over and holding his head. And a little while later, he sits up straight. Tian Song takes out a painting from his bag. Noticing that despite the fact that there are many cars and fights, there is not a single scratch on it. However, the store he was going to was closed, so he decides to go there the next morning. The young man takes off his shoes and lies down on the bed in his jacket, folding his hands behind his head and looking at the ceiling, thinking that if calligraphy and painting are fake, then he must find other ways to earn money. Also, the young man reads several chapters of the book Notes on the Protection of Treasures, which Sanju gave him yesterday, and it is very good, to such an extent that the young man could not stop reading them last night. A good novel for everyone, so he is thinking of releasing a few chapters, because in any case, this work does not exist in this world. Tiansung decides to watch the live broadcast. He sees Sister Lei Fan, thanks to whom he was able to fight today, and next to her is a yellow-haired man in good physical shape and in bandages on his hands. The guy never thought that there would be such an opportunity in which two anchors could broadcast together. Lei Fan and the man notice that Papa Wang has joined their broadcast as a spectator, so the girl happily greets him. The man also smiles and greets Papa Wang, saying that his name is Zack. He is a Mue Thai world champion and therefore he invites the viewer to give him coins and learn this art. Wang Tan brushes his teeth and watches the broadcast in parallel. Noticing that Zack is quite straightforward, so he asks how many coins he wants. The yellow-haired man shamelessly calls the amount of 4 million world coins and then he will teach Papa Wang everything. And the price is so high, because the man is a 5-time world champion in Thai boxing and thanks to his training no one can beat him. Lei Fan is angry at Zack, calling him a black-hearted cretin who is trying to rob the viewer. The girl asks Papa Wang not to pay attention to him. If he wants to learn Kung Fu, then she will recommend other masters to him, and Zack spreads his hands and says that he just pays his price directly to avoid trouble, because he may not have money. According to the yellow-haired man, it may turn out that Wang mortgaged all his possessions in order to reward Lei Fan for the first time, and Tan Song himself smiles watching the broadcast, because Zack seems very interesting to him, but Wang Tan does not have coins to give them. Tiansung decides to see what time it is, and it's already on the clock, so he decides to check his balance and opening it, he sees that everything is zero. Wang wonders why the world's coins have not been updated. After five minutes, an alert comes that the coins are credited to the balance and the young man rejoices, realizing that it was just a system delay and the money came, now he feels more confident. Tiansung transfers all the necessary amount to Zack. And he writes a comment and asks if Lei Fan will participate in the joint broadcast today because he has been waiting for her for a long time. The yellow-haired man asks Papa Wang not to ignore him and therefore waves his hands in order to attract attention. Fan bows and says that on this show she will fight with Zack and hopes that the audience will like it. Wang Tan folds his fingers on his chin and thoughtfully watches the broadcast. Tian is glad that Lei Fan understands him and agreed to fight with Zack because that's how he can see how good Zack is in Muay Thai. The judge announces the start of the fight and Zack runs like lightning towards Lei Fan, which is enveloped by a sphere and the man begins to randomly strike blows, which the girl successfully blocks. Wang Tan, who attentively watches the fight, says that this Zack, who is playful and smiling, looks like a completely different person during the fight, he is extremely focused and this is just a striking change. Tai Chi Lei Fan combines both offensive and defensive effects, and this is more than enough to attack Zack. Therefore, it seems that Wang Tan's Lei Tai Chi still needs practice to reach the same level as fans. But at the same time, Zack is very relaxed and does not use his full strength. Zack's face gets tougher, and he says they're having fun, not fighting, so he asks the girl to fight for real in order to end this fight. The man swings and a blue sphere forms around his fist and he asks Lei Fan to be careful. The girl manages to dodge and says that the trick that Zack used was very dangerous, but thanks to her Tai Chi shield, she was not hurt, but Zack still became stronger from their last fight. The judge announces the winner, which becomes Zack, because Lei Fan flew out of the ring and this time lost to him, but she was not very upset. Zack happily throws up his coup lucky, shouting that he has won, which means that his Muay Thai is invincible. Wang Tansong sums up everything he saw, saying that Zack is very strong and it made an incredible sensation. Every person who is engaged in martial arts wants such skill and it's not a pity to spend 4 million coins at all. Zack gets impudent and proudly throws his head in and says that he changed his mind and now he wants 10 million coins. Because now he feels invincible with his Muay Thai. Now 4 million is too little for him. And these words angered Wang Tan. Papa Wang praises not Zack, but Lei Fan, writing that she is very good and did a wonderful job. So he sends her 50 coins and Devushka, smiling sweetly, thanks him for his attention. 
The guy says goodbye and writes that it's late and it's time for him, but he hopes to see the fan again in the future. Zack gives the back one because his dream was ignored. And she waves her hands asking the big tyrant Papa Wang not to leave, saying that he believes that he is a real tyrant and besides the price is negotiable. But they don't pay attention to Zack, and Lei Fan says that he deserved it. Wang Tian takes a shower, puts on his pajamas and goes to bed thinking that Zack has a terrible attitude towards the audience and his opponents because he does not show any pity and respect. In any case, he is in no hurry, so he decides to go to bed earlier because tomorrow he has a lot to do. In the morning, when the sun is shining brightly and already at the zenith, the young man arrives at the Zine Nguyen consignment, where there is an antique shop that he was looking for. He is met by the hostess, who asks the guy to wait a little, because the picture he brought has not yet been evaluated by their evaluation expert Dong Lao. Lao seriously examines the painting, naming it and saying that it is fake. Wang Tansong does not understand and asks fearfully if this painting is fake and Dong Lao excitedly says that he means that this painting is at least 60 years old, but it is still so perfect and it is too incredible, so he is in the deepest shock. Tansong thanks the expert for his appreciation and explains that this painting was entrusted to his ownership, so he is interested in the approximate cost, but Dong Lao does not answer saying that it still needs further identification. But the young man seriously repeats that he needs money. Lao calls two tall men with suits, glasses and walkie-talkies and they stand behind the guy, looming over him like a shadow. Wang Tian does not understand what is happening and why he was blocked. Does she really want to fight with him? So he stands up while one of the men pulls his hand on his back and the young man thinks that he intends to get a gun. But the guard pulls out a briefcase, which is full of money, and another guard holds a ribbon with a smile. Tian clarifies whether this money is for him and Dong Lao nods affirmatively, saying that this is a 500,000 yuan deposit and explains that as soon as the valuation reaches a certain value, they will pay the guy a deposit of 500,000 in advance. They just need a few more days before the exact valuation. The hostess asks the young men not to worry and not to doubt, because he can contact their shop at any time and if the experts make a mistake, 500,000 yuan will not be returned. Wang Tian is shown a consignment agreement in which the commission agent carries out transactions on his own behalf, but in the interests and at the expense of the consignor, and he signs it when leaving the shop. The hostess asks him to be careful and get to the house in integrity and safety, saying that they will allow him within three days. Dong Lao accompanies the young man with a smile, saying that he is a real and energetic young man who had such an unusually rare thing, and besides, he very calmly accepted such a huge amount of money. And the hostess notices that Tian Song is quite handsome. Lao believes that the young man will definitely become a great person in the future. Behind the assumed indifference, Wang Tan had a frenzied joy, so as soon as he moved far enough away from the shop, he sat down around the corner and screamed. He was given 500,000 yuan and this is not a dream. The painting he was wearing all this time was real. He had never seen so much money in his life. The salary he received at his previous job was only 4,000 yuan a month. And how many years would he have to work to earn that much money? And this is just a part that was given to him. Tian Song gets up, wipes his sweat and tells himself that there is no need to be so disoriented. First you need to go back to the hotel. Wang Tian has not been to Jaya for a long time. The city has become much more prosperous than Yangtze, so he decides to take a little walk and find a place to eat. The guy catches the eye of a large shopping center, where he goes, buying a steamed bun, which is very tasty for him, he chose the right store. After that, he goes into the lobby of the hotel where he is staying and someone calls out to him and this person turns out to be Zioi, who says that she has been waiting for him for a long time and asks him to come up to her and sit down next to her, because she wants to tell him something. But when he sees her and listens to what she calls him, he leaves as if I haven't heard or seen her. Annoyed, Zioi gives an order to her guards so that they find out which room the guy lives in and they unconditionally carry it out. The guard informs her that the burden lives in room 1204 and is alone in it and the woman decides to visit him and show what she is capable of. Entering his room, Wang Tianzong first goes to the shower and coming out of it, he notices that his muscles have become more taut. The secret book of Tai Chi is really a very good thing. He feels cheerful all day long. He has wrapped a towel around his thighs and there is a knock on the door of his room. Wang Tian opens the door behind which Xiaoyi appears, with his head held high. She lowers her gaze and sees that the guy is wearing only a towel. So I blush and ask the young man if he always greets guests like that. He has no manners at all. She says that the question she wants to discuss is very important, so she hopes that he will listen to her. But the guy does not let her finish slamming the door in front of her, which angers her and she demands that her guards knock down the door of his room. Xiaoya tells the guy that he is a bully and allows himself too much and does not show her due respect. Dissatisfied with the late visit of uninvited guests, Wang Tiansung asks how they dare to call him a bully when they themselves broke into his house and knocked down the door, ruining his property. 
Zaoya says that he is too stupid if he does not understand why she came and explains to him not to contact her younger sister Zio King anymore, because they are from different worlds and categories. He is poor, and she is a rich and respected girl. Tiansong smirks maliciously saying that she is no longer his boss and cannot control every step he takes, his surroundings and desires, and even more so she is not his guardian or parent. The woman is angry and yelling at him, just because she is Zio Ye, the boss of Xioxing martial arts, she has the right to all this. And he's just an insignificant person who missed his last chance. If she ever found out that Tianzong had seen her younger sister again, she would kill him, giving him the most terrible death. After listening to her hysterical screams, Wang Tian looks at her with a cold and razor-sharp gaze and demands an apology from her immediately, and then leave his room, because otherwise, she will take force and they will not dare to blame him for rudeness. Seeing the look of young Zio, I backed away, asking what he would do. Seeing the undisguised fear in the eyes of their boss, the guards blocked her, asking not to worry. They protect her now they will give the guy a good lesson that he will learn for his life. The guards take off their jackets and service weapons while remaining in their shirts. One of them makes a lunge in the hope of hitting Wang Tian in the gut, saying that the baby needs to hurry up and apologize to Mrs. Sai. The young man blocks the guard's blow, so that he understands that the guy is good at Tai Chi, but they are not Shiites, because they are not like those useless coaches, but professional mercenaries. Tiansong does not listen to him and does a front flip, jumping over the guards, showing Xiaoya his dignity, which is hidden under a towel. The woman blushes and demands from her subordinates to finish with the boy as soon as possible, because she is not interested in watching them fight. The mercenaries tell the young man that he can jump like a monkey as much as he wants, but he will not win over them if he does so. Wang Tian confidently looks at the men and smiles, directing the energy flows inside himself and saying that they do not even see the difference between them, which means that they are far from experts, and besides, he himself is already tired of talking, so he is ready to end their useless battle. The guards attack him at the same time, but it was not successful for them, as one flew into the wall. The second one grabs the guy by the forearm, saying that grabbing is his main skill and while he grabs the target, she can't get free and first he will tear off the guy's arm. But no matter how hard he squeezes the young man's hand, nothing comes out, and Wang simply says that this is his inner strength of Tai Chi and hits the man on the chin with his foot, knocking out his teeth. Zio Yu remains unprotected and quieted down, and Wang Tian approached her asking why she was silent. Does she really think that everything is under her control and she can do whatever she likes, but this is not so. Whether it's her martial arts coach or a hired professional bodyguard, the result will always be the same. Tian Song will be the winner, embarrassed by the closeness with Tian Zio. I admit that this time her bodyguards did a bad job with him, because he's pretty good, but she just wants to warn the young man this time. She is also outraged at how close Wang Tian is standing to her and if he dares to touch her, she will kill him herself and call him a pervert. Tian Song looks at her as if she is nothing and tells her that he has no desire to touch her, and it is somehow stupid to threaten him when she is in such an ambiguous position. That day, he saw that her martial arts masters, but nothing was over yet and they would meet. I don't quite understand what he is talking about. And the young man, dissatisfied with this, folds his hands on his chest and asks not to pretend, but to return home and ask her instructor Liu herself. And he is also not interested in her younger sister. Moreover, he plans to open his own martial arts hall in the city and then he will show what he is capable of. Zio Ye thinks that Wang Tian just can't get along with her and therefore tries to open his martial arts hall next to Yangtze, and thus he tries to humiliate her. They tell the guy that they are looking forward to opening his gym to look at him, because his skill is really good. She was wrong about him, but he is not invincible at all. There are enough skilled masters in her martial arts hall. The young man lies down on the bed and looks at the woman asking if she has finished her monologue. If she cannot leave, then she can notice the girl he planned to call and satisfy his sexual needs. After these words, Zio flies out of the room, where in the corridor she is met by other bodyguards asking about mercenaries. But the irritated woman asks them to shut up and take her to the company without any questions. She doesn't understand how Tansong dares to humiliate her like this, but fortunately he doesn't know about her aces up her sleeve. They also note that Chan's skills have become even better, as he himself has become more attractive. Wang Tan's room was changed, because the one where he stayed was unsuitable for living. He takes out his phone in order to relax and watch the broadcast and spend the accumulated money, but the application notifies that the platform is going to technical work, which will go on for one week. The young man sighs and jumps on the bed, saying that he has nothing to do for a whole week now, but his bed is very big and it's super cool. Then his TV background begins to vibrate, because someone calls him and on the other side of the wire, the girl introduces herself and says that she is an employee of a Xinjiang store and she calls to tell the exact offer of experts for the picture. The proposed amount is 2,480,000 yuan. And after listening to it, he happily raises his hand, because luck is on his side. 
With this amount, he will definitely be able to open his gym. His joy is interrupted by another call, which for some reason the young man does not really like. The guy picks up the phone and Zio King greets him, or as he previously introduced himself to Kinger, asking the guy if he remembers her. The young man asks what happened and why she is calling him so late. King is sitting with her friend at her house, having arranged a pajama party and says that she is glad that she kept the young man's number, because she wants to walk with him and thank him for saving his life in such a way. She hasn't been doing much lately, so she's always free, and the young man agrees. After they finish the conversation, he grabs his head because he had previously told Zioya that he would not approach Zio King, so why did he agree to go on a date with her? Although if we consider it not as a date, but as gratitude, then everything is fine. That's right, because she is a college student and he does not and cannot have any views on her. And besides, he is not afraid of her older sister and he has done nothing wrong, he will just accept gratitude and that's it. The next morning, they go to the Maple Park Amusement Park, where Zio King hugs him and cuddles up to him, saying something about pirate ships and how exciting they are and how amazing Chan is. The guy is not calm, he is wildly stunned, because he missed the moment when their walk turned into a date. He sips juice and asks the girl to tell him what she called him for, he is busy and things are waiting for him, so he can't walk for a long time. The girl smiles happily and says that she wanted to say about her sympathy for the guy and he chokes on juice from shock, spitting it out. The girl walks ahead of the guy, and he asks her if she wants to say that her sympathy for him is justified by the fact that he saved her earlier or she means that she loves him with all her heart. And King simply replies that both options are correct. Her sister is a very strong person, and few people dare to resist her, because everyone is afraid of her. But in King Wang Tan's opinion is completely different, especially since she has heard about him and thinks that he is very interesting to her. Tiansong explains that it's not that he has a character, but that Zio Yi is too powerful and strong a woman. Zinger says that she knows this and now I annoy her, but she wasn't like that before. When they were little, their parents abandoned them, leaving them with nothing but a bunch of debts, and it was Zioya who was able to rise to this position and take such a position, relying only on her tough character. But, unfortunately, I am becoming more and more authoritative and I believe that sooner or later she will hurt herself, so it will probably be good if someone teaches her a lesson. After listening to the girl, Wang Tan says that everything he does is not aimed at teaching Zioya a lesson. The young man just wants to warn her that status does not give a person the right to look down on everyone and humiliate others, so he must prove himself to show how it works. Zinger claps her hands and says that the guy is just wonderful and she admires him, so the young man blushes a little and praises himself for his eloquence. The guy has a tattoo around his neck that attracts the girl's attention, and she assumes that this is a scar from the fact that his head was cut off earlier, but he says that this is a tattoo covering a mental scar. He touches his neck and his gaze becomes drooping and lifeless. Since Zio King had told her story, then he would tell her his. Wang Tian never had a father, and his mother soon died, leaving him with his stepfather, who drank every day and beat him to such an extent that the bruises did not go away, because the old ones were replaced by new ones, and the abrasions became more and more every day. The stepfather was an evil man who suffered from alcoholism and never controlled himself, so one day he almost strangled Chan and after that the boy ran away and did not return in order never to forget his past. Even though it is painful, he got himself a tattoo, so as not to forget that he can only rely on himself and no one else. Even if one day he turns onto a path here, which will be thorny and difficult and it will be impossible to leave it, he will go forward without yielding to anyone. Zio King, after listening to his story, says that he is a very strong man who deserves a lot. She stands on tiptoe to ask him something. King kisses him on the cheek and asks if she can become his girlfriend, the girlfriend of such a good guy. After kissing him, she says that he can think about the answer and runs off to another attraction, and then she promises to treat him to food when they leave the park. Wang Tan asks if he looks so poor that she wants to buy him food and the girl, giggling, says that he is really very poor. The date that day was very pleasant and comfortable. It was probably the happiest time in his life, which he will always remember with warmth and a smile. But despite this, the young man has not forgotten his original purpose and mission, so he comes to the antique store for the rest of the amount that was transferred to his card. Dong Lao asks the guy to call him if he has more paintings, and the hostess says that the guy has become even more beautiful. Wang Tansong is heading to Yongxing City. The startup funds are in his hands, and he is ready to start his own business. In Zhejiang City, Wang Tan invited a fat man to dinner at the Grad Hotel. Their table is filled with a lot of expensive dishes, which the fat man eats with both cheeks. Tiansong asks him to take his time, because they still have a lot of dishes left. And the fat man is very happy for his friend and grateful that he invited him to such an expensive place. Wang explains how he was able to get so much money. And the fat man, after hearing about the painting, begins to talk admiringly and spit, because he thinks that this famous painting 
which was left by his ancestors, was sold for more than 2 million. Fatty's name is Fatty. And he says that this really fits his bad bad guy style and Fatty thought that Wang was relying on his own skills, but it turned out that he still relies on his ancestors. Wang Tansong says that money is just a tool, a currency to achieve his goals and a dream is all that matters. And he dreams of opening his own martial arts hall in Yangtzeing City, which will be better and bigger than the Saioxing Martial Arts Hall. Fatty says that he understands that his brother holds a grudge against Saioya, but do not get too carried away. You need to spend money wisely because it costs a lot of money to open a martial arts hall and it's too much for revenge. Does Tan Song really want to open his gym because he is practicing Tai Chi in order to compete with the Xiaoxang Martial Arts Hall? Wang Tan announces that he will also participate in the annual martial arts competition. He needs to have his own martial arts gym to sign up. There's only one slot in town, and he needs more real combat experience, so Tan Song is going to open the gym and practice by himself. Fatty says he didn't know he had such great dreams and that's why he will support Wang Tan. Wang thanks his friend for his support, saying that the revolution has not yet begun, and the comrades are already working. Fatty decides to go and get all the necessary information about the opening of the martial arts hall, but first Wang Tan has to pay for all the food they ordered, otherwise Fatty will be ashamed. They study the documents and come to the conclusion that the area required for the center of martial arts is quite large, and a good location in Yangtzeing is not cheap, so something they found is the best choice. It's a little scary to think that the rent for the year will be almost a million dollars, and there are also large repair costs. Fatty has friends who are engaged in the repair business, and he will contact them later, arrange and arrange as much as he can. Utilities, advertising, labor, and Wang Tan probably won't be able to afford it all, even if he sells all his paintings. Tian Song recalls that he recently signed a contract for a novel, and he can receive royalties and remuneration for the manuscript. The novel is quite popular in their days and is called Notes on the Protection of Treasures. Fatty says that he is a big fan of this novel and asks his friend to tell the whole story of the writing, as well as whether the main character carried the three-star coffin of Koro Lalu to Africa. Tiansong smiles and says he won't say anything. Soon, the money was almost spent due to the preparation of the martial arts hall, so it was time to come up with another way to earn money. It took almost 200 watts to decorate and rebuild the martial arts hall. After that there will be advertising personal expenses, etc. and he needs a lot of money. After seven days, the live broadcast service has ended and he can finally watch the broadcast. Maintenance ended on time and he has 4 million mo on his account. And this pleases him. The guy needs to drop the idea of martial arts training for a while. Now he needs to earn as much money as possible. He needs a reward, like that famous painting, to realize everything he has planned. But his biggest problem is that this service can find an error in his account. And if it is fixed, then everything will disappear. It may be that this is his last time using this app and he should take advantage of this opportunity. Wang Tan decides to study the industry and his attention is attracted by the headlines Treasure Hunt and Wild Hacking, Quantum Razors, Indecision at Every Turn, Quantum Mechanics and thinks it would be great if it were true. Tian goes on the air of one professional, which causes a stir, and the host of the broadcast flatters Papa Wang. Van asks him not to get so excited. He came here only because he was interested in what kind of product he represents. The man says that their razor can automatically recognize the owner's facial features to achieve a perfect fit. It also provides a cleaning and sterilization function to save the user time and effort. And most importantly it has a transmission function through quantum space. Of course, there is no such technology in Wang Tian's world and perhaps no one will be able to develop it in the next 30 years. And this is exactly what Tian Song wants. The young man praises the presenter, writing that this is an excellent technique and he will give him 1 million world coins in exchange for a copy of the drawing. The presenter agrees and says he agrees to 1000 zero and he will send him the best of all the drawings they have. Having received the drawing, the young man was pleased, because it will definitely be sold at a good price. That night, Wang Tan watched the live broadcast of the Taizy master, Yang Lucian. After the words of the master, he began to better understand the inner strength of Tai Chi. The skilled craftsman took up his business, and Wang Chan, without hesitation, rewarded him with 3 million coins. With the help of live broadcasts, he was able to travel freely to different worlds. Wang Tan wants to explore all these worlds and become stronger. Wang Tan's reward today is 3 chests. He can't wait to open them as soon as possible and hopes that there will be secrets of Tai Chi masters. But there are 10 million coins in all 3 chests. A saddened Wang Chan goes to bed. He tries to calm himself down and tells himself that he has drawings and he can be calm but in the meantime he needs to get some sleep. At that time, he still did not understand how widespread the use of coins was. While at Saioxing Martial Arts School, Saioya gets the information that Tianzong is already going to open his martial arts school so early. 
The secretary of the president of the company says that this is true and the scale of the place chosen by him is not small. It is located on Jifeng Street and it seems that the young man himself is ready for a big battle. Xiaoya doesn't know where he got such a lot of money from, but she is absolutely sure that he will regret it soon because it's not so easy to open his own martial arts school. The secretary turns to Ms. Xiao and says that in addition to Wang Tan, they have another important problem. Kawano Jiro, who was fired last time because of the incident with Wang Tan, returned to Japan to find his teacher, the king of Japanese judo, Kitagawa. Kitagawa will most likely come to Yongxing to challenge Wang Tan and Xiaoyu herself, thereby saving face in front of his teacher and student. After listening to her, Xiaoyu says how dare such trash as Jiro come back and inform on her. She, Xiaoyu, is at the top of China, she has everything under control, why would she be afraid of his trowels from the island? She sends the secretary home, saying that she is free and Xiao Zhang bows and leaves. After Zhang Xiao left, I allowed myself to express all my emotions, because Kitagawa Ziyu is really a big problem, especially since last year he had already defeated several martial arts schools in the province and she would come to prepare well for his arrival. Wang Tan brings Fatty to the old warehouse, and the fat man does not understand why. Tan says that he wants to open his auction exhibition here to hold a sale, but Fatty considers this warehouse to be poor and the exhibition in it humiliating. Tian says that they don't have much money left, so this way they will save as much as they can, and in addition, Oh has been looking for something like this for quite a long time. It has a treasure in his hands, and the phone was bursting with calls yesterday, and wherever he held a sale, they will all come. All these tech company executives can't wait for them to come to him, so he decided to hold an auction in order to entertain them all equally. They go into the warehouse and it smells terribly damp, and it's scary as if there are ghosts but there is a lot of room for an auction in it. Grandpa comes up to them from the shadows, which scares Fatty very much and he jumps on Wang Tan and screams wildly. The old man notes with displeasure that the youth is very noisy, and he is responsible for this warehouse and his name is... Grandpa has heard that someone wants to rent his warehouse and it looks like these noisy guys are the tenants. He looks at the young men with disbelief and calls them a bunch of children and asks why they rent this warehouse. If in order to make a mess, then he does not intend to rent anything to them. Wang Tan smiles sweetly and says that Uncle and misunderstood everything. They are decent people. They want to rent a warehouse in order to hold a sale. And when he saw Uncle Anna, he immediately remembered his beloved grandfather, who was also a Red Army soldier. Tian Song chose this warehouse because he remembers his grandfather and the glorious tradition of great leaders. No excess, no waste, perseverance and hard work. One seam, one thread. Hearing this, on beamed, because after so many years, they, the youth, still remember the quotes of their ancestors. That's right, and for this, he will only charge Wang Tan 100 yuan for this warehouse. Tian Song agrees and calls Uncle in a good person, because it's true that they all live under a red flag and they are all one family. Wang Tian asks Uncle in to go to rest, and he and Fatty will put things in order themselves and hold a meeting tomorrow. Fatty realized that he had been called here to become a cleaner. On is surprised by the initiative of the guys and looking at the youthful enthusiasm of the guys. He could not stay on the sidelines and rolling up his sleeves says that Uncle An will help them clean up. When he was in the army, he could raise a whole cow in one breath. Fatty asks Uncle An to calm down and take a little breath, and they will clean up themselves. They cleaned all day and when they got home, Wang Tan immediately took a shower and went to bed. This day was much more tiring for him than the days when she was practicing Tai Chi. Tomorrow they will have a meeting with those corporate giants who need a patent for drawings, and he hopes that he will earn good money on this. It's not even midnight, but he still wants to check what's on the air. A message came to him. The text of the message reads as follows. Dear tester Mr. Wang, the system thanks him for his support. There has been an extreme jump in gold coins on his account, and, in accordance with the original terms of the system, his account will continue to exist in accordance with the terms of the agreement. However, now his account balance will change weekly. The amount will continue to double, but every two weeks the balance will be automatically cancelled. After reading this, the young man happily jumps in bed. Although the balance will double only once a week, the system did not consider his actions a bug. Now he won't have to worry about it, he really is a tyrant. In the early morning, Wang Tan and Fatty go to the warehouse. Tan looks cheerful and happy, and Fatty looks sleepy and tired. A young man opens the door to the warehouse and walks in, happily saying that there will be an auction today and it's just wonderful. The fat man yawns because he was invited to clean up his dreams. But the warehouse is very clean, everything glitters and there are a lot of stools, which surprises the couple very much. Uncle and meets them with other old men and smiles sweetly, saying that he brought some volunteers here to help the guys. Wang Tan bows and thanks On and his friends. And as a thank you, he asks to take a small gift for him and his old friends as a reminder of their youth. 
An waves his hand and says that they did not do anything incredible, but helped of their own free will. He asks to accept what they have done as a gift to the younger generation. Fatty shakes the old man's hand and says that he is also the commander, but not of the troops, but of the elementary classes at Yongxing School and the old man is angry at him because Fatty decided to make a joke on him. Wang Tian looks at his watch, because by this time everyone should have come, oh, there is no one. After about 15 minutes, a beautiful long-legged girl comes into the warehouse, apologizing for making them wait. Her name is Zhang Chen and she is a representative of the innovative company Zinyu. Ban welcomes her and thanks her for coming. And the girl takes the guy's palms in her hands and says that he is young and handsome. It seems to her that it is difficult to be a hero at such a young age. Jiang Chen says that she saw a group of big men in uniform who blocked their way and none of their cars could drive to the warehouse. So other companies had to leave. She doesn't understand what these guys are doing in the middle of the road and why they blocked her. But she was able to run away from them as soon as they got out of the cars. Fatty assumes that this is Xiaoya's antics and she is involved in it. But Wang Tan does not think so, because if it was really me, she would not miss the chance to come to them personally. Chen knows that Xiaoyi is the manager of the martial arts school, but she does not understand how she is connected with innovative technology companies. Another car pulls up to the warehouse and a Yongxing city mayor named Ma enters inside. Ma is an obese man and came here to look at a new technological development. The mayor greets everyone and asks who is responsible for this event. And Tian says that the mayor does not look at all like the one who was on TV, and Fatty explains that this is the deputy mayor. Ma looks around the warehouse, wrinkling his nose in disgust. He asks why there is no air conditioner in this place that would blow it. Wang Tan approaches the mayor and greets him, saying that he is the organizer of this auction. The deputy mayor of Ma says that he has heard about the young man and that he has the development of high-tech razors that he puts up for sale. Ma says that on behalf of the whole city. He is ready to generously pay such a young guy for his development, namely the amount of 1 million yuan. He worked very hard to collect such an amount and give it to the young man. Wang Tan, Fatty and Zhang Chen heard the price and looked at the deputy mayor and his assistant with displeasure. The girl does not hide her indignation and openly tells Ma that 1 million is a joke, not money, because she has no idea what impact this technology can have. Also, the mayor's early man stole the development companies from her. Ma is outraged by the words of the girl he mistook for a secretary and asks Wang Tian to watch her tongue. Tian Song asks Ma to calm down and it seems to him that it would be fair to give the floor and the opportunity to other companies because this is an auction, not a personal meeting. Jiang Chen supports him, saying that competition is one of the main rules of the free market. Deputy Mayor Ma is angry because he thinks that the young man looks down on him. They just did a favor, offered to buy this development, but the girl wants to deceive him. Wang Tan stops him and thanks him for the visit, and also asks his guards not to block the road and entrance, and if he has a desire, he can take part in the auction like the others. Ma does not like such a treasure trove, and he orders the guards to attack the young man and teach him a lesson. The bodyguards grab the guy by the neck and Tian Song does not understand why physical force is used against him if he did not touch Ma. But the men say that this happens to everyone who goes against the will of Mayor Mayo. They intend to take the guy's phone without permission and see if there is a complete design of this development. They need it, because it will be a breakthrough in technology. It will be a breakthrough of their city of Yuzhen. To begin with, the bodyguards offer the guy to voluntarily give the phone in a good way, because he probably still has copies on the phone. Wang Tian calls them a bunch of idiots and uses Tai Chi skills, scattering men around the warehouse like fluff, and then uses Kung Fu. Grandpa On praises the young man, saying that the young man has excellent kung fu, he did not know that he was so good at it. Fatty is proud of his friend and says that these bodyguards voluntarily signed a death certificate to the family by contacting Wang Tian. Tian Song says that just now the mayor's guys tried to beat and rob him, and how dare he say something about morality. Wang threatens, saying that he does not know what the further presence of Mayor Ma in this warehouse will turn out to be, especially without other bodyguards who patrol the roads blocked by them. The police squad bursts into the warehouse, asking what happened, because they just received a message and decided to check this place. Fatty explains to the policemen that they are peaceful people who were attacked by the mayor's bodyguards, while he exceeded his proper authority. Ma knows perfectly well the police officer who arrived, Mr. Zhu, who is his friend and says that he personally saw Wang Tian beat up all the bodyguards of Mayor Ma, so Wang himself will be responsible. Uncle and gets into an altercation and confirms Fatty's words, saying that the bodyguard threatened the guy with physical violence. But Ma is rude to Uncle calling him an old bastard who should shut his mouth. Zhu gives an order to arrest the guy and they take out their weapons, pointing at the young man. But they are stopped by a man who went to the warehouse. A 4550-year-old man in civilian clothes says that he was informed that there was a stick in this warehouse in which bandits were involved and asks the mayor 
and commanders you to clarify the situation. Ju greets Major Chen and says that he did not expect to see him, and Ma, smiling falsely, says that he did not want to disturb him, but since he is here, he will report on the situation a little later for the general good of Yangtze City. Wang Tian says that, unfortunately, they can't wish for anything with the mayor's resourcefulness, because they don't have people who would help them avoid problems with the law, so there is nothing left but to give the drawings. Uncle An approaches the young man and asks him not to worry, saying that as long as his conscience is clear, no one will touch him. Major Chen sees On and joyfully runs up to him, because that former commander of his squad, whom he is very happy to see On too, saying that it has been a very long time since their last meeting. Chen says that An spent a lot of time looking after him and he will never forget all the help he provided. Uncle An smiles warmly, saying that Chen is a great person who has earned a name for himself as an honest policeman and a leading specialist in Yangtze. But the trouble is that the management of their team is not as well coordinated as it should have been. With every minute of this dialogue, Ma and Ju's faces became more gloomy. Major Chen says that he understood Uncle An's words. Yangtze City is always ready for the development of technology, and today's incident is their oversight. A little later, he will personally apologize to Mr. Wang, and he will wait for Deputy Ma and Commander Zhu in his office, where they will all talk. Ma promises himself that next time he will definitely not regret this impudent Wang Tan. Tian Song and Fatty jump around Uncle An, saying that he is amazing and incredibly cool. An says that Chen was also once a young man with high ideals and morals, just like they are now. The revolutionary fire has been passed down from generation to generation, and hopes that he will also work hard and work honestly. After all that had happened, the heads of technology companies came to their event one after another, and the warehouse became very crowded. Wang Tan attracts the attention of the visitors and asks for forgiveness for waiting. The auction is about to begin. The presentation was calm. Everyone in the hall was interested in the new product. The trading price went up and up, showing the interest of the audience. The price was so high that it exceeded all his expectations. Someone gave 5 million, and someone 8 million. In the end, the development was bought out by a representative of the Xinyu company in the person of Zhang Chen. This amount was enough to build a gym for martial arts classes. Chen is grateful to the guy for the presentation. She has never met anything like this in her life. She promises that they will develop the project further, and Wang Tan wishes good luck. In addition, President Chen invited them to dinner at an expensive hotel, but something strange happened at that dinner. A girl thanks the young man for his attention, for not refusing dinner and for the opportunity to get and learn something new. After a few glasses of the most expensive wine, they have already relaxed a little, covered with a slight drunken blush and Jiang Chen, the CEO specialist of Xena's company, looks like she is interested in Wang Tan not only professionally, and to help him open up, she decided to invite him to drink wine. The intoxicated girl sits close to the young man, saying that with every second he arouses more and more interest in himself. Even when he was face to face with police officers, when they made a deal for a huge amount, he remained so calm and rational. Such composure from him, and at such a young age, amazes her and even excites her. The young man says that she overestimates him. He was just so overwhelmed with emotions that he couldn't say anything sorry. Drunk as a skunk, Fatty says that he is also surprised by Mr. Wang. After receiving such a large amount of money, he thought that he would just jump for joy or go completely crazy. It's getting harder for Fatty to understand Wang Tan every day. He's become very mysterious. Tian Song tells the fat man that it's not worth talking like that. He'd better continue drinking with uncle, but only in silence. But they're all right, he's really too calm. It is possible that his thinking has changed with the receipt of boundless external power. Since this morning, he feels his body differently, but he doesn't quite understand the reason. The guy is drunk and in order to dispel his brain a little, he goes outside, which he warns everyone sitting at the table about, and he also feels how the power of Tai Chi is filling his body and now he can control it. As he completely mastered it, from the tips of his hands to his toes, he feels this bright energy. Ban is so drunk that he falls. Wang Tan wakes up in a hotel room, completely naked and with a splitting voice. He remembers how they had dinner, then how he got up and after dark from loss of consciousness, but he does not remember how he ended up in the room and who undressed him. On the floor lies a jacket that looks and smells like the perfume that Jiang Chen wore, and from the shower you can hear an ox. After ten minutes, a fat man comes out of the shower, not a beautiful lady, and he immediately begins his tirade about how it cost Fatty a lot of effort to drag his friend's carcass to the hotel. He shouldn't have been drinking so much. Unfortunately, Miss Chen gave him her outerwear. Tian Song doesn't quite understand what happened to him, because he was sure that he could control his body perfectly and he now hopes that he will be able to find answers in worldwide life. If this is due to a lack of inner strength, then he definitely needs to strive to raise the level of his martial arts skills. He is watching the broadcast of a certain Lai Balon, who talks about his discoveries in the field of combat, 
and that he defeated other masters using this technique, proving that the Chinese are not the weakest people in East Asia. Tianzong was very interested in Lai Beilong's martial arts philosophy, and in general, this guy is quite good. Moreover, now he is trying to raise the level, so this is a good option. If the enemy attacks, it means that he has some intentions for this. It is necessary to detect this intention, thereby anticipate his actions, and then intercept the attack of a potential enemy. This is the strength of the Lai Balon reception. Van transfers 8 million to the guy, for which he promises to give Dad Van his interception skill, Jeet Kundo. Immediately after that, the system notifies the guy that he has received 40 coins. After the update, the system allows you to withdraw money from the site to the real world. 